Okay, so today I'm going to talk about uh, management and how to analyze a um, management team of a project. And this video or PowerPoint presentation is part of a, a series that I have that d discusses on how to analyze a project. So this one's on management. Another one is on how to look at developers. Another one's on how to look at a uh, total value locked in on-chain metrics. So let's get started. So I wasn't even thinking about doing this video because this is kind of um, a subject that people don't look at. But then I realized, you know what? The industry, the technology industry is very left-brained and it's very quantitative. So because of that, there's very little right brain qualitative work done. So I figured, you know what, let's delve into this area and take a look at it. And the second reason that's really important is ever since COVID-19, there's been so much um, remote work. And even now, maybe there's a little hybrid work, but the technology industry, specifically crypto and blockchain, has always been and, and is and will continue to be very remote work oriented. And I think personally that, yes, I like to work from home, but I think personally it's difficult to uh, create a good culture and ethos when you don't have everyone working together in the same room or in the same building or the same area or campus. You want to have people somewhat close to each other. So that's why it's very important that I did this video. And uh, my third point is and why I did this video is why we should care. I think it's, it's important in this industry in particular because this industry changes a lot. It's very fluid. I think the word is amorphous. Because of its fluidity, companies and industries are constantly within technology, are constantly changing. So companies are, are pivoting. You hear the word pivot all the time. And in order to pivot, you really need to have a good, again, good management team and culture. And the good thing about this uh, presentation is that I'm going to be given specific examples of specific projects. And if you would like, you can go to, I think it's slide 12, where I talk about those specific projects. And so you can see examples of what I'm talking about. So let's get started. I think I covered everything in my notes here. So, so let's get started on the presentation of analyzing the projects team. And remember, this is not financial advice, NFA. So remember, again, there are many skill sets, and I'm not going to go, be going over every one of them, all of these, but um, I think that, that it's very good to recognize that there's a lot you need to know. You actually, it's like you need a team. You need a whole team to analyze a blockchain project because not everyone on the team is going to have all these skills. It's just too many. And this slide comes to you via Wesley Kress. He used to do uh, great videos, particularly on his favorite blockchain project, which used to be called Elrond. It's now called Multiverse X. And so some of these I'll talk to you about are economics and financial markets. That's obviously that's qualitative, but of course it could be quantitative. Uh, UX, UX, I should say, or on the left side here, you can see where my mouse is. He wrote it here as user experience and design. So that, I would say that's mostly qualitative. And then there's valuation, that's quantitative. And um, on the right here, programmable, programmable money, programming and tokenomics, that's mostly quantitative. So you see, you can see it's a whole inclusive, um, widespread approach, I should say, left brain and right brain, like I like to say. Uh, so I want to point you to this paper that I found online. It's called How Do Venture Capitalists Make Decisions? Because I think that cryptocurrency investing is a lot like VC investing. So I, I pulled out this paper from the National Bureau 
of economic research. And this paper talks about all the qualities that are important to build a good team. And so I just want to focus on the left side. What you, what you can do is stop this video anytime and just print it out because there's so much to talk about. So I'm just going to focus, like I said earlier, on the left side here where my mouse is. And these are the important factors. And, uh, and this is for, I'm going to point out the columns is all. And so this fit, starting from the bottom, fit, ability to value, valuation, industry, market, product, business model, and team. And so for each industry and even sub-industry, certain amount of these factors will have more weighting or more importance than the other ones, right? Uh, so I think it's important, since we're talking about management, to see how the team ranks. And if you see here, the team got its highest number. This is important, by the way. The number, the higher the number, the more important. So 95, you can see, is a very, very high number. So this paper said, basically, essentially, that the management team is the most important factor when you're looking at VC. Because when you remember, when you're looking at a VC company, portfolio company, that company is not out yet. It's just in their mind, right? The software industry is incredible, particularly software, if you think about it. You literally create value from nothing. You sit there at your desk as a software programmer and you create value. It's a pretty amazing thing when you think about it. Remember what Mark Andreessen said. Remember, this is a guy that started um, Mosaic, Netscape, Andreessen Horowitz, the VC firm, and within... Andreessen Horowitz, he started A16Z, which is the VC firm of, uh, of his uh, uh, umbrella firm, uh, Andreessen Horowitz. And he said years ago that software is eating the world. He also said in a recent interview on Lex Friedman, if you, I don't know if you know, you guys know Lex Friedman. He's a really amazing guy. He's from MIT. I, I admit he's a little boring, but he he really does these deep dive interviews and he had a, like a two or three hour interview with uh, Mark Andreessen. And that's when he said, it's amazing how you just create value out of nothing just by sitting in the, there, sitting at, away at your computer, typing away code. And now with AI, maybe AI is going to be doing most of that, right? So, uh, so that's very important. Let's go on to this paper so, because I've got more to talk to you about that. So it says here, uh, and you can read the top sentence, the fraction of respondents who marked each quality as among the most important qualities within a management team. So this slide just talks about management. And again, maybe we should just point to the left column because there's a lot to talk about. And they talk about uh, industry experience, entrepreneur experience, ability, teamwork, and passion. So the highest ranked one was ability because think about it, you're creating a business from nothing. But I, I also think that, uh, and related to that is industry experience, of course, because if you have industry exper experience, you're going to have ability. So maybe they should have put those two together. But I also think that teamwork is very important, at least from my experience. So I think something's missing because if you go back there, no one talked about integrity. I personally think that integrity, especially in this space, in crypto, integrity is everything. Either you have it wholly or you don't. There's no sliding scale. You can't say, hey, I like Sam, because, but I think he's like... Uh, 60%, he has 60% integrity. It doesn't work like that, does it? Either you have integrity or you don't. Speaking of Sam, I don't know if you ever heard this, the Forbes curse. So a lot of these people that make it to the top of the cover of Forbes magazine, they didn't do too well. And some of them are crooks. So you've got, um, what's her name? The Theranos founder, Elizabeth Holmes. You've got Sam Bankman fraud. And then on the lower right here, you've got um, 
Newman that founded uh, WeWork. I don't know if I would call him a fraud. Uh, I felt like he founded a cult, right? But that was a slippery slope to a fraud in a way. And then the lower right, I would not call this a fraud. This is a Silicon Valley bank. They called it America's one America's best banks, SVB. That's a holding company for Silicon Valley. So here's some examples on how you can demonstrate integrity in a workplace. You respect others' opinions. And you don't even see this in some of the largest, most powerful companies out there that you would think have lots of integrity, like Google slash Alphabet. You know, there's a whole lot of uh, going on there with uh, what you can and cannot say. I'll just leave it at that, working at Google. So what are some ways, again, to demonstrate integrity? I'd say you address conflict in an honest and respect way, respectful way and directly. I think that's pretty important, which is not here. Uh, and you be a role model. You know, walk the walk, talk the talk. And be ready to work and report any bad behavior. Have a good reporting process. Process in any company, I think, is very important. So what are the benefits of good management? And I can let you read this on your own because I want to drill down to some crypto projects. But I'll just talk about one or two. Motivation. Encouraging motiv motivation. Encourage, and this is where it comes from the leader. Encourage people to work hard and be motivated to come into work every day or online to open your computer every day and have good workplace communication and have good teamwork and, and be able to share knowledge. Now, this is not easy. Like, I'm going to give you an example. Elon Musk and Tesla and SpaceX and, and his uh, new other companies like Boring, he's been able somehow to motivate his employees. But Elon Musk has been known, his companies have been known to have bad ESG, in particular governance. He has not been known to be a good boss, just like Steve Jobs. But somehow, he's been able to translate his vision and carry people and his company to the other side of that. So it's pretty amazing. So it's not easy. And what I'm trying to tell you here is, these guys, Steve Jobs and Elon Musk, have been amazing at being able to motivate their employees. But it's also not easy to do. And it's not easy to rate. Like for me, I have a hard time embracing Tesla, for example. I think Tesla is one of the most amazing tra trends. What's the word I'm looking for? Trans transitional generational companies out there, up there along with Apple. And I mentioned Steve Jobs. It, that's just coincidence. Apple's a transformational company. And there's other companies like that too, like Google. But I find it difficult to embrace Elon Musk fully because of his issues with governance and even the E and S. Well, he's done, I shouldn't say the E. He's done great. He gets an A for E for the environment and maybe a C plus for social. And here's that, that comes, that's where we talk about um, how is it working for Elon Musk. And, but for G, not too good. So that's why you gotta look at everything as I like to say holistically. So let's get going. So why should we care about management? I think I talked to you about this already. If you got good management, you can solve problems. You have fewer lawsuits. You hear that, Elon? And you have better governance. And so obviously this is a weakness of Elon Musk and Tesla. And it, but it's also a weakness of some uh, crypto projects. So now I want to talk to you about these uh, projects. Yeah, I gotta fix my video camera, it keeps moving around. So sorry for the you know the wishy washing here of the camera. So let's talk about and this is a pretty important slide of this presentation. I'm gonna give you specific projects that I actually looked at. I looked at many projects, especially 
layer ones, layer zero, layer twos, oracles, and I can give you specific examples of what I'm talking about with these management issues. So number one, lack of conspira uh, conspiracy, transparency within, and, uh, within these projects, specifically inflation. Uh, Avalanche, for example, they removed one or two uh, web, one or two, um, what do you call it? Pages of their website, their blog, because there was there were there were doubts about the inflation. Their inflation has been very high, and they made it sound like it was not high. And so when there was uh, a lot of um, pushback from the YouTube community and other people, podcasters, whatnot, there were there was a lot of pushback. What they did is they removed the the web pages on that inflation data. So that's that's a no-no. So that's very bad. There's also rumors that they attacked other blockchain projects. So I actually like Avalanche, but I don't fully like them. The, the same way I like Tesla. I think Tesla is a great car. I like the company, but I cannot fully support both Tesla and Avalanche because of what I just said. Number two, there was uh, rumors of potential fraud and a Ponzi scheme, including rehypothecation. And there's also uh, problems with no, not having deposit insurance. And there was a criminal investigation of a, the former chief financial officer and chief revenue officer. And this is what I'm told, I should have told you first, this is, this is all pertaining to Celsius. All this is Celsius. So I never liked the Celsius coin. I think it was called Celsius. I, I looked at the Celsius project. I never liked it because there was so much bad going on. Yet at the same time, there were a lot of um, podcasters and websites and YouTubers uh, promoting Celsius, even though I didn't like them. So you got to be careful. You got to do your own research. Uh, point number three. Lack of cons cons uh, conspiracy again. Transparency. Uh, it's not just Polygon. I see a lot of issues with lack of cons transparency. Remember, the whole ethos of blockchain and crypto project is that everything's out there, that it's open code, open space. Everything is open. Yet, <laughs> you're seeing a lack of transparency from the the management teams. And you, you see that in particular from Polygon and Chainlink, but it's not just them, it's other ones that have pseudonymous management teams. They don't even, we don't even know their names. Even Avalanche, going back to Avalanche, I don't mean to pick on them, but they've done a lot of bad. For example, they put out a paper and they didn't even name the authors of the paper. So like, you gotta be, I think this is a white paper, so you gotta, you gotta be careful out there, friends. Uh, infighting. Cosmos has had a lot of infighting and people have come and gone. I, I gone I'm trying to remember the name of the founder that came and left, but there's a, been a, quite a bit of infighting and not just from the founder. So that's the problem. How do you organize a team properly and move forward? And how do you, how do you deal with problems and, and, and crises when you're infighting? So that's a no-no. Um, issues with faking academic credentials. So Charles Hoskinson's, I'm not sure how to um, analyze uh, Cardano because uh, Charles Hoskinson has, was accused by Laura Shin in an article that she wrote. She also wrote a book on, on uh, blockchain. She accused him of faking his academic credentials. That's a pretty big a pretty bad thing, but I'm going to give, out of all the blockchain projects, I'm going to give Charles Hoskinson and Cardano a pass because I've listened to him. He seems like a pretty smart guy. He seems pretty outspoken. He puts himself out there. He goes on presentations. And his Cardano project has been, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, has been... Um, 
looked into like he's had a lot of um, due diligence on the project a lot of the a lot of his work has been audited so you know what maybe we should give him a pass but it's true no it's not true there is a rumor that he faked his academic credentials like ever since this is already a year ago maybe more than a year ago that Laura Shin said that but I haven't seen seen anything else out on Charles so maybe we should you know give him the benefit of the doubt uh, next point, integrity issues. There were integrity issues with Sam Bankman fried before the fraud blew up in November 2022. And so um, always be careful for that. When you see, like I said earlier about integrity, you either have integrity or you don't. And so when you see something like that, be careful. I know I sound like I'm contradicting myself because I just said, let's give uh, Charles Hoskinson uh, a chance, but you know that that hasn't been um, that wasn't proven before. Uh, and other, on the other hand, before FTX blew up, there was quite a bit of integrity issues with Sam Bankman Fried. So th that's the difference. Okay, there was issues uh, with him pushing up and manipulating debts. There was issues with um, paying off someone to hurt um, Cardano. There was another issue with um, him selling via his future futures market, selling, selling tokens. So he was buying them and then he was pushing them down after he shortened. There was a lot of issues. And there was another issue, I can't think of it offhand, that he was doing. So multiple issues. Oh yeah, the other issue, this is probably number four, is that he was um, manip manipulating and and maybe even paying off some of our politicians. And this is what started the whole opening of the fraud cases because he was trying to push regulators to move in favor of FTX. So that's the difference between Sam Bankman Fried and Charles Hoskinson. So let's go to the next one. Uh, XRP slash Ripple. I did a whole video on Ripple, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. But I think Ripple is a separate case, is a big and separate case. There was a huge number of coins given to the founders and the for-profit corporation of Ripple. So that's very different than what you've seen in other uh, project, blockchain projects. Uh, next, lack of conspiracy, uh, conspiracy, conspiracy, transparency, misleading in, in investors, arrogant founders. We, we, you, you see that on and on and, and and I, I listed uh, an example right here. So just be careful out there. Unequitable ICO. You, you not only saw this with, with some of the newer generation layer ones and layer twos, I should say, I want to say, you not only saw this with layer ones and some of the newer layer ones, but you also saw it with the depths, especially the ones on Solana. When you have unequitable ICOs, that's a red flag. Just be careful for that. Of that, um, the last one is founders, and I mentioned this earlier. Founders that are anonymous or have disorganized information or bad blogs and websites. You saw that with Dorchain. So, th so there's a lot, as you can see, there's a lot to tell you about, and there's a lot of pro pro projects with a lot of issues. One thing I did not tell you about is these are the top projects. They say there's over 10,000 cryptos, 10,000 projects. And the ones I've talked to you about that have issues, these are the top 10, top, 10, top 20 projects. So these, these are the good ones. So imagine what the bad ones are like. So sources of information, project uh, white papers, blogs, explorers, YouTube videos, secondary research, um, Missouri Token Insights, Data websites, Crunchbase is good for that, Glassdoor. Next, speaking of good management, you know how they talk about the PayPal mafia? And, and these are guys that are coming from a good pr uh, project, from a good corporation, PayPal. And you, and you see that also with Ethereum. I think Ethereum is a great project led by Vitalik Buterin. And so if Ethereum is a great project, maybe... 
The founders coming out of Ethereum that worked at Ethereum are also good. So just keep your eye on, on these founders. I, I, I know some of them, that, but not all, all of them. Maybe you've seen some of these guys. You've heard some, some of them. But the ones that catch my eye are Joseph Lubin. He founded uh, Consensus. Um, and who else? Of course, Dr. Gavin Wood, who was a chief tech officer of Ethereum. So basically, he's trying to build Polkadot to what Ethereum is going to be looking like in the future. And then, you, of course, you've got Charles uh, at a Cardano. And who else have I heard of? Uh, Anthony Delorio, I've heard of him vaguely. So you've got some um, big people that came out of the Ethereum project. And one more thing, and I, I met mentioned this earlier at some other my, my other videos. I, I mentioned the word holistic, but let's use this other word, gut feeling. Of course, I, I say one more thing, one last thing, because that's how Steve Jobs, you know, when, would uh, end his... Uh, presentations. So one last thing is gut feeling. I think it's a very, very important thing in this area. If you're getting green lights everywhere, everything looks good. The quantitative data looks good. Even the qualitative data looks good. But then your gut feeling days later is telling you, wait a minute, something ain't right. So you should take a step back and say, you know what? Maybe I should give this project a second look. This is how I was at... Um, Avalanche and I think Chainlink too. Like I really like these projects, but something was not right. I just didn't feel right, especially with Emin. He's a founder of uh, Avalanche. I really like Avalanche. They're doing really well now with gaming and subnets. They've got great technology, but I just don't feel right. I mean, when the guy, when the team removes something, so the guy says something about inflation, the inflation is low when it's really high, and then they, re they remove web pages. That doesn't leave you with a warm and fuzzy feeling. So just be careful out there, guys. If you like this video, please smash that subscribe button and like us, because if you like us and we get more viewers, that's how we can create more videos that are educational for you. Well, thank you all for listening and goodbye.